On day one, I spawned in as a spider, surrounded by my family. Today, I was gonna learn how to be a legendary thief, like all the generations before me. Just then, we were discovered by the Queen Bee. One of her minions swooped in and kidnapped my loved ones. If you don't find all the pages of the legendary book of thievery in 100 days, I'm going to kill them where they stand. But I don't know what that is. How am I supposed to find these pages? On day two, I was lost and all alone. I didn't know my family had some secret book. Where do I start? Suddenly, I was ambushed by a massive insect. Give me the arachnids guide to thieving and I won't squash you. The what? Just then, I noticed I had something in my inventory. You mean this? Hand it over, kid. That book holds great power. No way! The bandit charged me with great speed and began to hack me down with his massive stinger. I tried to retaliate, but without any weapons, it was difficult. Ah! Pick on someone your own size! During the ruckus, I realized I had the ability to climb walls and shoot small amounts of webs, but it wasn't enough to take down the bandit. I had to run away. You'll regret this, spider. I won't stop until I find you. Is this book really that important? On day three, I tried to find a safe place to hide. Everyone seemed to be after me. Ew. What is all the fuss about? This is just some old damaged book. I decided to take a closer look at my family's book of thieving. It was so torn up that it only had one single page in it. The page read, Lesson 1. This guide holds all of the super secret thieving techniques of the spider family. Let it be passed down from generation to generation to make the spider clan the greatest and most powerful family of all time. Keep your eyes peeled, man. That annoying arachnid clan could be anywhere. They ain't getting past us, boss. Good. They better not, or it will be your head. Later that night, the ancient warrior, Sir Sebastian, scaled the castle walls using his secret web-swinging ability to make it past the guards undetected with ease. He made it deep into their castle and broke into their vault, stealing all of their treasures. As he made his escape with the treasure, the greedy king and his lackeys were making their rounds and discovered. All of our treasure has been stolen! Yeah, Curse you spiders! I'll get you and the rest of your troublesome thieving family! Once safely away from the king, the ancestral warrior handed out the treasures to the people of the village that had been taxed unfairly. Thank you so much, young spider. We can't thank you enough for the kindness you've shown us today. Your generosity is saving lives! Oh, my family sure was awesome. Just then, I noticed that I had a new web device in my inventory. I equipped it and suddenly swung up to the top of a tree. I guess with each new page, I'll learn a new ability from an old member of my family. Amazing. Just then, a baby pig came out of a bush nearby. Whoa, hey, are you reading the Arachnid's Guide to Thieving? I heard the pages of that book have been lost to time. Fascinating. That's right. It's missing most of its pages, but I'm going to find them all and gain tons of powers with it. What? But that's impossible. I'll find a way. I can tell. It's my destiny. Well, you're going to need some help. I'm Wilbur. Want to team up? Sure. You seem cool. And you haven't tried to attack me yet, so I think I trust you too. Yeah, you can trust me. I'm just interested in the history of it all. On days four through seven, I randomly gained three hearts. I guess the legendary power of my family ran through my veins. After that, I started to gather the materials I'd need to survive. I punched down some trees for wood and used it to make a crafting bench and wooden tools. Next, I used my pickaxe to gather plenty of cobblestone, which I then used to upgrade my tools to stone. I'd like to avoid wooden tools as much as possible. Once all of the necessary equipment was acquired, I scouted out a cave location for both Wilbur and I to stay. I then used my materials to begin building a base to call our own. I made sure we had our own rooms and a central area to place a crafting bench and furnace. Sorry it's underground. I know pigs like planes. Are you kidding? I've always wanted my own secret base. Oh, well, I'm glad you like it. By the time I finished my work, I was feeling a bit hungry. I better get this food spider style. Since I was a spider, I was able to make all the string I could ever need. I used it to craft myself a fishing rod. I then went fishing for some salmon. Afterwards, I went back home and cooked it up in a furnace for Wilbur and I to enjoy. 
Dinner time! The two of us chowed down on our meal, transforming me into an adult. I now had 10 hearts. I'm already feeling much stronger. On days 8 through 11, I set off in search of the first missing page of the book. However, I didn't get very far before I was ambushed again by another bandit. Hey, Spider! You have the book! Give it here! I had no choice but to fight off the assailant. He had me in size, but I was much more prepared than day 2. I stopped him in his tracks with my webs and used my weapons to slash him down. Uh, yeah. I won't let you defeat me that easily. After a fierce battle, I managed to take down the bandit. Woohoo! I'm tougher than I look. Upon their death, they dropped a mysterious map that led to an unknown location. They seem awfully interested in the book. They might know something. I followed the map until finally arriving at a massive ant colony. Whoa, I wonder what's going on here. I wandered around the place, checking out the sights to see, but something felt awfully wrong. Hello, good sir. Could you please spare some food? Oh, of course. I tossed some fish in their direction and continued on my way. I eventually spotted a baby ant and approached them. Could I please have some food? When was the last time you ate, little one? I don't know. Doesn't the queen ant feed you? No, she only feeds herself. Well, I think I can help you guys out. On days 12 through 15, I infiltrated the Ant Queen's nest to help out her subjects once and for all. Using my thieving spider abilities, I stealthed my way past all of the Queen's guards. After traveling down multiple corridors, I eventually arrived at the Ant Queen's chambers. There, she was happily munching down on a mountain of food. Hey, share with your subjects! Oh, a pesky spider has made his way into my chambers. Just then, a buff ant guard entered the chambers. At your service, my queen. Harold charged at me, and I took out my sword to begin to fight him off. He was big, and his pincers packed a punch. Luckily, I had my own abilities up my sleeve. I used my webs to slow down his attacks and hacked away at him with my sword. After a long battle, I took out the guard and cornered the queen. Okay, okay, you want food? Here, take it. Appreciate it. Now let's get down to business. Hand over the missing page of the Book of Thievery. So that's why you're here. You're a thief. She tossed me over one of the missing pages. You better watch your back. These pages are powerful. The same to you, queen. If you mistreat your colony again, I'll be back to finish the job. On days 16 through 18, I read the next page of the Arachnid's Guide to Thievery. Lesson two, the art of archery. Skeletons aren't the only mob that is a skilled archer. A spider thief is fast and silent, and also has good aim. Sharpshooter Shiloh nabbed your food storage, sire. We can't keep up with this onslaught of arrows. Well then, let's lure him out into a trap. That foolish spider couldn't resist the prize I have in mind. The king arranged a contest of archery skills. The winner would receive poison-tipped arrows, those of diamonds, and the title of most skilled archer. Not a spider in sight, sir. Ugh, where is he? That spider shouldn't be able to resist such a bounty. The contest went off without a hitch. Each challenge eliminated contestants one by one. But as the final villager was about to shoot his winning arrow, another arrow hit the bullseye from afar. What was that? I'd like to thank my mom, my dad, and of course, our horrible king. He's taking the prize! Someone catch that spider! Sharpshooter Shiloh managed to flee and spread his new wealth to all of the poor villages across the kingdom. Wow! That's incredible! Just then, I got a strange feeling and transformed into a stronger spider. I gained three hearts and poison arrows appeared in my inventory. These are just like the ones Shiloh had! Sweet! On days 19 through 21, I was eager to test out my new arrows, so I used some string to craft myself a bow. Afterwards, I found some mobs and shot them down with ease. The poison really packed a punch. These will definitely come in handy. With my reading done, I finally returned to the ant colony to give them the food they deserve. On the way, I noticed that only a small amount of the viewers watching are subscribed to the channel. Press subscribe and ring the bell for notifications. When I arrived with the food, the ants couldn't have been happier. This is the best part, giving away what I stole to the people who really need it. Thank you so much, mister. Can we please join your cause? The more the merrier. I returned to the base with my new ant residents and carved them out some rooms of their own. 
Welcome to the crew. Once everyone was settled, I went mining to find some more materials. I managed to dig up some iron as well as coal. Score! I returned home and smelted the iron into ingots. I then crafted myself some iron tools to make gathering more efficient. Now that I had coal, I also got to work on some torches to add some light into my base. As I placed down the last torch, Wilbur walked up to me. Hey, Max, I was doing some digging, and I think I may have a new lead for the next page. Take me there. On days 22 through 25, I traveled with Wilbur to search for more pages of my family's book until we accidentally stumbled onto a giant Black Widow spider. Whoa, be careful, Max. Black Widows aren't known to be very nice. What's this? Another thief coming to steal from me? Attack, my children. Before I could think, we were surrounded by dangerous Black Widow spiders. Wilbur ran and hit while I started trying to protect the both of us. I quickly swung around dodging foes, and I hung from the ceiling, firing my new arrows at as many of them as I could. The problem was, there were just too many. I dropped down and pleaded with the queen. Stop! Stop! Please! We mean no harm! We're here to help! Guards halt! You help? How could you possibly help? My name is Max, and I come from the Spider Clan of Thieves. We're looking for the lost pages of my family's book. Ah, Max, your father has helped me in the past. I trust that you will honor him in helping me again. You know my father? Whoa. I had found one of the pages that you seek, but the Praying Mantis Clan has stolen it from me. What? Those jerks! Find the mantis, and you will find your missing page. Suddenly, the Black Widow Queen fired a bunch of webs at Wilbur, trapping him. <whistles> hey, what was that for? Collateral, I cannot trust you fully yet, thief. You'll get your friend back once you prove yourself. Now go, find the mantis clan. I ran out as fast as I could. I needed to save Wilbur ASAP and get that next page. On days 26 through 28, I began to search for clues for any nearby mantis colony. How am I gonna find this place? Wilbur is counting on me. I continued my search with no luck until suddenly I spotted a mantis in the distance. Is that what I think it is? The mantis was seemingly minding its own business and began walking off. I gotta follow it. I sneakily observed the mantis from a distance, hoping it would lead me to where I needed to go. After a lot of following, I finally made it to the mantis clan colony. Perfect. Now I just need to find where they're hiding the missing page. I continued into the colony, trying my best not to get caught. Just then, a small mantis startled me from behind. Whoa. Oh, hey, little guy. Sorry, I can't talk right now. I'm looking for a missing page in my book. You know where it is? Nice. Cool. Can you show me where to find it? Huh? Behind me? I then turned around to find the giant king mantis looming over me. Oh, you're a big one. And who do we have here? A thief? Uh, no. The giant mantis began attacking me, using its piercing claws to deal massive bleeding damage. I tried to get as much distance between us as I could, but his giant legs could catch up too easily. I bit and slashed and gnashed, but his sharp limbs were super dangerous. After a lot of struggling, I finally found an opening and struck the final blow, taking him down. The bleeding damage left my health in a bad spot, leaving me close to death. The debuff then subsided and I survived. Defeating the Mantis King caused him to drop one of the missing pages of the book. Yes! Just what I came to find. Now I need to get back to the Black Widow Queen and free Wilbur. On days 29 through 32, I returned to the Spider Queen's cave to release Wilbur. I see you made it back in one piece. Well done. I told you I was here to help. Now let my friend go. You have gained my trust, young spider. Your pig friend is free to go. Thanks, Max. I got you, homie. For your troubles, please take this. It will help you along your journey. She gave me a spider sword that could poison my enemies. Wow, very cool. Much appreciated. Use this power of the book wisely, Max. There are evil forces out there that want what you have. We left the cave with no time to waste. What's the plan now, Max? I need to keep searching for these pages to save my family. Cool, let's keep going. Not this time, bud. I'll meet you back at the base. Oh, man. With that, we split up, and I headed to a safe location to read the next page. On days 33 through 34, I took the time to sit down and read the new page I had just gotten. Lesson three, invisibility. The best thief is the one that goes undetected. So why not be completely invisible? The Beatles have stolen our most precious treasure. Without it, our entire society will crumble. Don't worry, the Arachnid clan will never stand for this. We'll take back what's rightfully yours. 
The queen led the arachnid member to the beetle's fortress. However, she could not fathom the size of the stronghold. How are you going to get in? The place is crawling with guards. I have my ways. Using the arachnid cloak of invisibility, the spider turned invisible and slipped into the fortress easily. He went completely undetected and returned with the Black Widow's prized treasure. Whoa, how did you manage that? They don't call me Invisible Ian for nothing. Wow, the queen wasn't kidding. My father really did help her people. Suddenly, I gained two hearts and the Cloak of Invisibility. Okay, now I definitely have to try this out. I tried the cloak on and I immediately turned invisible. I was definitely gonna have an easier time sneaking now. Let's use this for some good. I located a nearby village where a scam artist was hoarding tons of wealth for himself. Invisible, I infiltrated the robber's home. Did the breeze open my door? I walked by him undetected and cracked open his chest to retrieve what was stolen. Ah! My chest opened by itself! Boo! Ah! Ghosts! <laughs> With my new loot, I became visible and passed out all the emeralds to their rightful owners. Nothing is better than helping others. On days 35 through 37, I returned to the base to give it a bit of much needed TLC. But before I could start, the tiny mantis from before hopped up to me. Hey, it's you again? You made me get caught. Oh, I'm sorry. Are you looking for a place to stay? Okay, let's make a room for you. I carved out a room for the little guy and got him situated. Once he was comfortable, I continued with my original plans for the base. Firstly, I cleaned up the base, making it look a lot more like a home and less like a cave. After that, my plan was to dig a series of underground tunnels that could lead to different biomes. This'll make traveling undetected easy as pie. As I tunneled deeper into the ground, I discovered coal, iron, and even diamonds. As I broke one of the ore, though, a tiny insect came out and tried to steal my diamonds. I defeated the monster quickly, taking back the diamond as a reward. I quickly crafted some iron armor and a diamond pickaxe and then continued my work. The upgrade really sped up the process, and after a lot of digging, I completed two whole tunnels. Once I was finally done with my tunnels, I reinforced the base with some spider webs to catch any intruders in their tracks. Nice and secure for my new friends. On days 38 through 40, I set off in search of clues for the next missing page. Ugh, I'm getting nowhere. It's not like a clue will fall from the sky. Just then, a note dropped onto my head. What in the world? We need to talk. Meet me in the abandoned mine shaft. But I don't know where that is. I continued searching, coming across the village I had helped the other day. Hey, you're that spider that duped the scam artist. Thank you. Of course. Could you help me find the abandoned mine shaft? The mine shaft? But nobody's ever returned from down there. I don't really have a choice. Well, it's your funeral. They tossed me over a map and I continued on my way. I traveled underground until finally arriving at the place. Even though I was a spider, it still felt like something was off about it. This place is creepy. As I continued deeper and deeper inside the mines, I swore I could hear muffled voices. I considered turning back, but I didn't have any other leads. Just keep walking, just keep walking. Finally, I reached a mysterious room that stood out from the rest of the place. I had no idea what waited for me inside and if it would be something bad. <laughs> I guess I'm doing this. I forced my legs to move forward into the unknown room and there waiting before me was a tiny bumblebee? Hi, my name is Beverly. On days 41 through 43, my conversation with Beverly continued. Hello, wait, I'm confused. I thought our clans were at war with each other. Not all of us feel the same way as the queen bee. We're a rogue faction just trying to live in peace. And how is that going? Ugly. She kills those she deems traitors, so resources are low and food is hard to come by. And why did you want to talk to me? I have a proposition for you. Let's team up. With our combined forces, I believe we could take down the queen bee. What's the catch? No cats, really. We'll supply you with honey if you supply us with flowers. And when the time comes, we'll help you save your family. You know what? I'm in. Just then, a group of zombies flooded the room. We are the lost souls of the mineshaft. You will now join us, Fortune 6. Run, Bev. I'll take care of this. Beverly fled through the air, and I readied my weapons for battle. They had me in numbers, but I definitely had them in strength. 
I lunged in with my sword and sliced them down one by one. Hiya! I could do this all day. For each zombie I killed, two more would take their place. I was gonna lose at this rate. I gotta get out of here. I squeezed out of the entrance and used my web slinging to escape the cave in one piece. On days 44 through 46, I continued to travel after a bit of a close call, but I was feeling really confident about my new team up. Things will only go up from here. Suddenly, I was ambushed by a swarm of killer bees. They surrounded me, and their queen descended from the sky above. How's the scavenger hunt going? Have you found more pieces of the book? <laughs> Your family depends on it. It's actually been going great. Good. Then hand them over. Uh, they're not here. They're at my base. <sighs> if you didn't have those pages, I'd squash you in an instant. Someone escort this fool back to his domicile. I don't want him getting away. Just then, Bev emerged from hiding. I'll do it, Your Excellency. Beverly escorted me out of the queen's clutches and back towards the home base. Keep cool! I'm saving you! Let's go, maggot! On days 47 through 50, Beverly and I returned to the base safely. That was a close call. Thank you. Of course! But the queen will be looking for you again when I don't return. Stay alert! Roger that. Beverly flew away, giving me an idea. I think the base needs more protection in case the queen comes. To work on my traps, I located a nearby bamboo forest where I harvested plenty of the stalks for crafting. While I was there, I went ahead and caught some more fish to feed me and my residents. We'll eat like kings tonight! I returned home with my haul and constructed bamboo spikes. I then used them to create spike pits as well as web traps to catch any intruders that dare to enter the base. Now this will keep the baddies out. Now that the base was more secure, I continued to expand my tunnel system. I dug and dug and even found more diamond. However, I also managed to mine myself into a strange area. Where am I? On days 51 through 53, I further explored this strange creepy area I stumbled into. As far as I could tell, the place was deserted. Where is everyone? I kept going, finding a small cave area. Just then, I spotted a horrific spider mob suspended above me. Whoa, dude, what happened to you? You're half human, half spider. I know, I know. It happened after I read this weird page from the Arachnid's Guide to Thieving. Where did you put the page? I buried it deep underground, so nobody else would find it. What? No! I need that page to save my family! Trust me, kid. That page is cursed. You don't want it. I'm willing to take the chance. Fine. But don't say I didn't warn you. The Spider Steve dropped a map for me to locate the page, and I continued on my way. If my family wrote this book, I wonder why the page is cursed. On days 54 through 57, I followed the map in search of the cursed page. During my travels, I mined a bit more iron and slayed a few mobs for their meat. Finally, something different than fish. Eventually, I arrived at the location on the map. The place was littered with warning signs and I felt the urge to turn back now. I don't think I have much of a choice. I took out my shovel and began to dig, but shortly after, a horde of skeleton spiders ambushed me. The book. The mob of spiders all began to attack me. I tried my best to evade for as long as I possibly could. No, stop! I'm a spider like you! Well, kinda! My pleas didn't work, and I had no choice but to fight back. I used my sword to slice them down and hit them with poisonous arrows whenever I had the opportunity. After a long battle, I managed to take out the last of the spiders. Man, this page better be worth it. On days 58 through 61, I started digging down towards the buried page piece. After a lot of work, I managed to dig up a chest. This must be it. Although I now finally had my hands on the page, I hesitated to read it. I'm sure it'll be fine? Lesson four, venomous abilities. Spiders are most commonly feared for their venom, but they didn't always have this. There once was an evil wizard that mastered potion magic, but he used it to terrorize the world. Nobody will destroy me. My venom is something all should fear. His power grew more and more each day until he threatened the balance of the world itself. We have to flee. The wizard's power is too great. No, we need to stop this. What are you supposed to do? You're only a thief. What every great thief does, steal the unobtainable. I'm going to steal away his dark magic. 
your tyranny ends here. I'd like to see you try. <laughs> Give up, <laughs> pathetic spider. <clears throat> Never! Violet defeated him, causing his venomous magic to manifest as a spider fang amulet. The wizard was now reformed. Wait, don't take the amulet. Poison magic is cursed. No, I will become the guardian of it. Call me Venomous Violet. My ancestor sacrificed herself to protect everyone. Suddenly, I gained five hearts and Violet's poison amulet. I feared I would fall victim to the curse, but I felt fine for now. I must be able to control it since I'm part of the Arachnid clan. On days 62 through 65, I returned home with my new amulet to find Wilbur and Little Mantis waiting for me. There's a weird guy waiting here for you. Ew, don't say it like that, Mantis. I'll check it out. I went inside to find the spider Steve from before waiting for me. How did you manage to find my base? You mined your tunnel into my domain. I just followed it back. Did you get the page? You know it. Well, I was thinking, could I hold the book? What? This thing isn't a toy. I know, but maybe it's possible for me to turn back to normal now that the page has been added into the book. It's worth a shot. I gave Spider Steve the book and he started to read its contents. Uh, how is it? Shh, I'm getting to the good part. Yes, I understand now. Just then, Spider Steve grew in size. Hey, 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 what are you doing? <laughs> the possibilities are endless. Snap out of it. I hit him with my sword, causing him to drop the book. A few moments later, he transformed back into a human. Ah, ah, ah. Whoa, whoa, I'm me again? Sorry I had to hit you. You were going a little crazy there. My apologies. That book was not meant for mortal eyes. Thank you, Max. I'm forever in your debt. On days 66 through 68, I made a diamond helmet, then continued working on my home base. I started by finishing up the rest of my tunnel system. It was a lot of digging, but I managed to create a path into a desert biome, a taiga biome, an ice spikes biome, and even a plains biome. I think they need to be further distinguished. To better identify where each path led, I decorated them with blocks from each of their different biomes. Lastly, I added signs for extra clarity, officially completing my underground tunnels. Now I'll be able to get anywhere without being detected. I returned to the inside of my base to discover Steve was still there, straight vibing. Aren't you gonna go home? I said I'm forever in your debt. I'll do anything you need. Don't worry about it, man. But if you wanna stay here, I'll make you a room. I went ahead and built Steve a room of his own, just like how I made rooms for all of my other residents. What you think? It's, uh, stone. Oh yeah, humans need beds to sleep. To make him feel more comfortable, I set up down my plane's tunnel to locate some sheep. When I arrived, I found a herd right in front of me. Don't mind if I do. I made quick work of them and gathered some wool as well as meat for later. I returned and crafted a bed with my new materials and placed it into Steve's room. Woohoo, yeah, this is so much better. I'm always happy to help. With my expansion completed, I took a step outside for some fresh air, only to be confronted by Beverly. Bev, what are you doing here? I need your help, Max! The Queen Bee is destroying the Resistance! On days 69 through 72, I followed Beverly to the Bee Resistance base to find that it had been destroyed. We walked inside to find bees and killer bees flying around everywhere, fighting each other to the death. Ah, my ears are ringing from all the buzzing! Suddenly, the Queen Bee emerged. You foolish bees! How dare you defy your queen! You were always a crummy queen, and we'll never stand with you. Silence! Bring me the spider! I have to stop this. Oh, you can't! She's too powerful! I have to try! I scurried out in front of the queen to confront her. Hey, I'm right here! Come and get me! How convenient. I can destroy this dreadful resistance and catch the pages while I'm at it. Get him, guards! A swarm of killer bees came flying towards me. I took out my weapon and began to fight. Yeah, 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 yeah. With the combination of my amulet for extra poison damage and arrows, I was definitely strong. But there were far too many for one spider to take on. Ugh, this isn't a fair fight. Their numbers left me no choice but to flee with Beverly. Run while you can, but don't forget our little deal, spider. On days 73 through 75, I was feeling really disappointed that the resistance had fallen. It was all my fault. 
Don't be too hard on yourself, Max. The queen is incredibly powerful. Then I just have to get more powerful. I believe in you, Max. But until we can rebuild the resistance, I have nowhere to go. Oh, come stay with me then. That sounds great. We came back to the base and started working on building a room for our new team member. While we were expanding the base, I noticed that Wilbur was acting kind of odd. Hey, Wilbur, are you... are you hiding something? Uh... No. Well, okay, bud. Even with Wilbur on my mind, I couldn't let anything distract me from gathering the pages so I could save my family. I set out to search for the next page of the book. While searching, I was confronted by someone. Spider, I finally found you again. Now, hand over the book. Uh, do I know you? What? But I, you don't remember? I attacked you when you were just a child. I've been hunting you down ever since. Huh, doesn't ring a bell. Then die! The bandit lunged at me with all of his might. His big story and even bigger pincer made me nervous. Luckily, I had my new poison and invisibility powers on my side. We were dealing massive damage to each other on both sides, but being invisible was too much for him. He couldn't see me, so I snuck around and dealt the final blow. Wow, that guy almost killed me in the beginning and almost got the best of me again. I need to be more careful. On days 76 or 79, I came back to the base to quickly regroup and check on my gang. Weirdly, I noticed that Wilbur was nowhere to be found. Hey, what happened? Where's Wilbur? Aw, oh, man. He was acting weird and left? I better go find him. I ran out to try to find Wilbur before he got himself hurt. While doing so, I discovered a plane's biome full of webs. What the heck? This shouldn't be like this. I carefully made my way further and further into the webs. Oh no! There are pigs trapped in these webs all over! At the end of the web trail was some sort of mutant spider pig. Wilbur? Is that you? Need more pages! Wilbur suddenly lunged at me with all eight of his mutant spider legs. Wilbur, please stop! He chased me around, striking me wildly. He was clearly deranged. Wilbur couldn't be of his right mind, but I believed he was still in there somewhere. I had no choice but to fight him off. After a lot of fighting, I finally knocked him out and he dropped the page of the book on the ground, returning him back into a regular baby pig. Wilbur, what happened to you? Are you okay? I, I found a page of the book and I really wanted to read it. You're so cool, Max. I just wanted to try and be like you. Wilbur, the book is so powerful. It's dangerous. Plus, you're perfect the way you are. Thanks, Max. I'm sorry. It's okay, buddy. Thanks for helping me find another page. With the new page in hand, I led Wilbur back to our base to rest. On days 80 through 83, I sat down and read the page I received from Wilbur. Lesson five, transformation. A spider is fragile without the appropriate exoskeleton. Luckily, the arachnid clan has that covered as well. The next story is one of the most advanced skills a thief can learn. The spiders have faced off with the beetles for decades. It is time we call a truce for the greater good. Truce? The beetles are mighty. We will not submit to some pathetic spiders, especially to someone as small and as pathetic as you, Gene. Please, we don't want war any longer. But I do! Give up! You will never break my impenetrable armor! Maybe not like this, but for my people, I will. Just then, the tiny spider grew into a massive size. Be careful who you call small. My name is Gigantic Gene. What the? My attacks aren't working anymore! You're not the only one with armor. With the strength of his new size and armor, Gigantic Gene was able to defeat the Beetle King and liberate the spider people from war. I can do that too? That's amazing! Suddenly, I transformed into an armored spider, just like Gigantic Gene. As an armored spider, I had 40 hearts and a full set of boss beetle armor, which gave me an additional four hearts. Whoa, 
I gotta try this out. I ran outside and tested my new armor out on some mobs. They were still able to hit me, but their attacks did way less damage. Who's squishy now? On days 84 through 88, I began to build rooms for the resistance survivors who lost their home to the queen bee. Once they were in a solid spot, I went mining. While down there, I found diamond. Sweet. With it, I made a diamond axe. Because why not? After that, I went outside, killing some sheep for food and wool. Sorry, guys, but it's for a good cause. Once I got back to the base, I realized things could be cozier in general. It still seems too cavey. I began to replace blocks all around the place to make it look nicer. I even added some carpet to each of the rooms and furniture in the main area. After that, I added a chest room to house all of my current and future treasures. One day, every single one of these chests will be filled. With that, my base was finally complete. I like this one. It's very secure. Not even a water spout could wash this away. On days 89 through 92, I went exploring, looking for anything that could help complete my mission. While doing so, I heard a creepy noise move around me. What was that? I kept trekking forward, trying to ignore the sounds. Until suddenly, a crazy looking man ran up and bit me. Ow! What the heck, dude? A nighty night, friend. I then started feeling really dizzy and passed out. Ugh, what happened? When I woke up, I noticed I had turned into a strange monster. What in the world? Am I Spider-Man? Just then, the same crazy guy that bit me came out. You're not Spider-Man. You're a bad spider. Oh, that's dumb. You work for me now. <laughs> uh, no. I don't work for anyone. Look, man, I got a lot of stuff I have to do. Could you turn me back to normal, please? No can do, friend. You're my minion now, and what I say goes. Minion? Nuh-uh. I ain't nobody's minion. You're going down. Never. We charged each other and began our battle. <laughs> On days 93 through 96, my battle with the crazy guy continued. He was tougher than I expected, but there was no way I was losing this fight and ending up stuck in this man spider form. The crazy guy moved at incredible speeds I had never seen before. I had to use my web shooter to slow him down, otherwise he was impossible to hit. While it was hard to land an attack on him, thanks to my poison damage, every attack dwindled his health down more and more. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. After a lot of fighting and landing some serious blows on my opponent, I beat him into submission. All right, now tell me how to turn back to normal. <laughs> Sorry, friend. There's only one being who can do that for you. What? Who? Her name's Madam Webb. I've never met her myself, but I'm pretty sure she can be found here. He tossed me a map leading to this Madam Webb character. See you later, chump. I left and set out to find this location. After much traveling, I found another dead forest. I'm definitely close by. Inside the forest was Madam Webb on a magnificent throne. Max, my dear boy, I knew you would come here. You did? Well, I'm a terrifying man spider thing. Can you turn me back to normal? I can do many things, including spell reversal. Come to me. I walked closer and she tossed a splash potion onto me, turning me back to normal. I'm, I'm me again. Thank you so much. Of course, I know your family's lineage, an honorable clan of thieves you are. If you need any more help in the future, do not hesitate to find me. I will, thanks again. On days 97 through 98, I returned home to find all my friends gone from the base. Huh, where is everyone? I then looked outside to find the queen bee waiting for me. Ah, so this is where you've been hiding all this time. What did you do with all my friends? Mm, I think you should be more worried about our little mission. They were a distraction, so I got rid of them for you. That's not part of the deal! Let them go! <laughs> Make me! I was furious, so I rushed in and began attacking the Queen Bee. She was very strong, and I soon realized that I was evenly matched. She summoned countless bee guards to aid her in battle. I was outnumbered, and they even managed to knock off my boots, causing me to lose four hearts. Despite it all, I was not outskilled by them. I slashed them down with my blade and fired webs to keep them at bay. With all my hard work, I managed to take out the army. Fight me yourself, coward! Just then, one of her killer bees arrived with news for her. I just found the last page, my queen. Excellent! Give it here! The bee dropped her the last missing page, and she began to read it. Yes! Yes! I understand! <laughs> 
she then transformed into a terrifying queen bee monster. Uh, now, I'll be unstoppable when you hand over that book! I quickly got out of there, trying to escape the mutated queen bee. On day 99, I found shelter somewhere safe, but I felt lost. If I give her the book, she'll destroy everything. But if I don't, she'll hurt my friends and family. While contemplating my decision, the baby man disappeared. Hit this! You're okay! But where are the others? They're okay? Oh, what a relief! I just have to save them from the Queen Bee's hive. I can't go after them. I'm too weak. Well, yeah, I did take down the King Mantis. Yeah, when you put it that way, you're right. Thank you. Baby Mantis and I hit the road, heading straight for the Queen Bee's hive. Let's end this. On day 100, it was time for the ultimate thief infiltration mission. I went invisible, surprisingly reverting to my original spider form. Weird. With that, I began my stealth mission. The place was crawling with guards, but luckily my cloak made it easy to slip past all of them. Man, this thing is amazing. I continued forward, eventually finding the throne room. Inside, the queen was waiting. To make matters worse, my friends and family were trapped in a large cage. Being invisible, I tried to break them out as sneakily as possible. That isn't going to work on me, spider! Dang it. I became visible again and walked up to face the queen. You slippery, slippery spider! Hand over the book! Just as we arranged! Why would I do that? You destroy everything! Oh, Max. That doesn't matter. Aren't you a thief? You should know a thing or two about honor or code or ugh, whatever hogwash your family spews. There is nothing honorable about what you have planned. I'll make it easier for you. Do you want your family to live? Because if I don't get that precious little book, each one of your friends and family will be killed in an instant. Please, Queen, you don't have to do this. We can each go our separate ways, with each of our clans living out their days in peace. You believe in destiny, correct? Yes, yes I do. It was my destiny to reunite the pages to my family's book. And it is my destiny to gain the powers from said book and control the world with it. You know I can't let you do that. Then you must die. With that, our epic final fight began. The fight was brutal. She was easily the toughest competitor I had faced yet. She was able to summon tons of her killer bee guards, but unfortunately for her, that little trick wouldn't work anymore. I had become skilled in all facets of my family's power. I used everything I had, including my webs to slow her down. I used my eight legs to quickly evade her attacks and counterattack with my weapons. When I got in close, I used my sword to deal massive damage. After a lot of fighting, I finally landed the killing blow. She bursted into honey blocks and her killer bees went down with her. Yes, I did it! I quickly ran to the cage, freeing everyone. The overworld had been saved.